Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Spider-Man 3 movie thoughts. I can deal with them taking a different approach to Venom than, you know, the, the sort of most iconic one. I believe this is like the ultimate Spider-Man Venom, where Venom is basically a kid, just like, you know, Peter Parker, and he could easily have been Spider-Man, but he made some of the wrong choices, and that stuff. That's fine by me, that sounds like a decent backstory. And, yeah, I don't mind that they make that choice over the big, bulky, you know, Eddie Brock of the more, you know, of, of original, classic Spider-Man. I can deal with that. But Topher Grace... Oh, for grace! I, I don't even have a problem with the guy, but you know what? Big studios really need to stop hiring Topher Grace in roles that are supposed to be even remotely intimidating. Predators made the same mistake. I, I just, what do they see in the... I have no problem with the guy. I haven't particularly seen, you know, stuff with him in it. Maybe that's why I don't mind him, but, but just, he's not intimidating. If, if we can just get that out of the way immediately, you know, and, and he's just really annoying in this. I, I, I have a theory. I think that he was as obnoxious in this as he is in order to distract from just how much we want to punch Peter in the face. And no, the face wasn't my first choice. When I watch the first Spider-Man movie, I kind of want to punch Peter, but I do feel like I'm kind of maybe in the minority there. In the second one, less so. In this one, I, I feel like everyone agrees with me. We, sh we should just punch this guy. Just, you know, yeah. So, so maybe Eddie is there to kind of balance that out so, so we don't hate Peter that much for being so really full of himself in this, you know. The... But, but yeah, just everything about the, the Eddie Brock in this movie. I hate how he's like, yeah, oh, I'm dating Gwen Stacy, and then he meets up with her. Yeah, we, we, we had coffee once, and it's just... I guess that's, again, supposed to be a joke, you know, Sam Raimi's sense of humor, but just... Okay, so I guess he blew out of proportion, he thinks that they're dating, or is he just lying? I, I can't, I can't figure the guy out, it just, but I, I get that he's supposed to be, you know, he's, you know, he, he cheats and he, you know, he breaks this reporter oath thing, you know, he, he puts something to print which is not true, which is obviously a wrong thing to do, but just, I don't know, and then, Yeah, he's just, he's not intimidating. And Venom... This is gonna get just a, a little, just a little fanboyish. As I say in the review, they get the look right. I'm really impressed with the movement of the symbiote. You know, it's, it's actually kind of funny how early on, like, when Mary Jane is leaving Peter's apartment, it like moves and then she turns around and then stops moving and then she closes the door and then it moves again. So it's kind of like one of those you know, rocks that move in, in a video game, rocks to move when you're not looking or something like that. Anyway, the movement of the symbiote parts and it's, it's sort of scream or squeal when, when loud noises bother it and I love the way it goes into Brock's mouth. It, it, in general, there is a very rapey, can I use the word rapey, it's the quality to the way that it attaches itself to the people, you know, like, like, you know, the lizard to be says in the film, 
once it, it binds, it's really hard to unbind, you know, there's, there's, it, it doesn't want to go home, you know, it likes where it is, it likes to stay where it is, it would like to stay, yes, grammar is officially dead, however, beyond the appearance of Venom, they just, they got everything wrong, Venom does not speak as, as, a, as, as a single person, it speaks as a, you know, we kind of thing. Also, Venom does not sound like a person, okay? I'm, I'm sorry, but it, it, it doesn't. I, I don't know exactly what it would sound like, but it's, it's an alien. It's, it's affecting, it's taking over. It does not sound like a person. And you know what else it doesn't sound like? Topher Grace! And just the, the and, and why did, was it, does it keep, you know, peeling back to show Topher Grace's face? You know, every time we see Venom's face, we're actually trying to forget that Topher Grace is supposedly in there, but it keeps reminding us. Yes, they gave him fangs, but just, yeah. And then he's like, right in front of Peter, and he's like whining, you humiliated me. It just, he sounds like, just, uh, just awful, you know. Some whiny little bitch. It's just and and this is our villain. This is this is the scary. I actually do like that they had him, you know, attack out of the shadows, like at least once. You know, when when the, you know, Peter's like looking around for it on top of the the building thing, and then it just comes out of nowhere. That that's. I don't so much mind the overall appearance, and especially not weaponry, of the, you know, new goblin in the movie, but does he have to use a surfboard as a glider? I'm not sure I can really think of anything more frat boy douchey for him to pick as a glider. Yeah, that's just... But I do love the sword. That, that just... Yeah, I like swords. It's kind of funny with the how, how inconsistent the effects of the pumpkin bombs are in this movie. You know, this, Peter throws like two directly at you know Harry's face, and just nothing happens. You know, once he gets amnesia, and the other time, ooh, he gets you know, scars, and then he throws one at you know the the symbiote, and it just evaporates completely. I do. Excuse me, I do like the, excuse me, that, you know, Peter tries to save Eddie, pulling him away from the symbiote, and Eddie is so desperate for it that he, you know, runs into, even though he dies from it, you know. I think parts of this did quite well in, you know, getting across how Peter becomes addicted to the yeah, the symbiote, the, the symbiotic suit, and and they, you know, they, they have these few bits where he actually sort of chooses between, you know, he has the symbiote suit, and he has an uncontaminated suit, and he chooses the symbiote suit, you know, this whole thing, and, and how it sort of, you know, he, he fights Sandman a few times. The first time he has his regular suit on, and you know he can't quite defeat him. And then he gets the symbiote suit, and he seems to defeat him. You know, so you you have that. It you know it, it gives him that extra power. Although other than you know the the scorecard for those two fights, we can't really tell that it makes him more powerful. I I can't really see where where it's sort of like the, the the difference goes. You know, it's not like Wow, I can never jump that high before, or I can never swing that far with you. Something. I, I can't really tell the difference other than that, but yeah. And, you know, that this whole thing of, you know, it, it you know, enhances aggression, as is told by Kurt Connors, whilst we see Peter eating cookies, because that's what aggressive people do, you know. Yeah. But, but yes, the, the, you know, it, it makes him, it, that's part of, you know, when, when he goes for the revenge, he's got the black suit, you know. 
that it kind of, yeah, you know, it, it clouds his judgment. I, I like how, how it does that. The, I don't really want to talk too much about the dance scene. I'd, I'd like to just go back to my happy place and forget that it exists. But I will just briefly talk about it. You know, it, it just takes away the, the seriousness of the, you know, I mean, we have Peter being a jerk, you know, if eventually he graduates to being a jerk from, you know, popping his collar and combing his hair and just genu generally being kind of emo. And then, you know, he actually rubs in Mary Jane's face that he's with another girl and, you know, he... And, and he eventually, you know, actually hits her. And that's when Peter actually realizes this is not what we want to be. You know, that kind of thing actually... Yeah, you know, that, that works. Or that, that would work. That, that is supposed to work as... The, you know, but we can't take it seriously because we've just seen him dance like that. You know, the, the whole thing is just, I honestly have no idea what Raimi was thinking with that, with, with the, and I, I guess it's in place of all the, you know, physical abuse humor in the, the first two films that, you know, if, if we, if he can't put that in, then he's just going to have characters dance. Also, I don't mean to be mean, but, but, but Kirsten does can't sing. I'm sorry. That just, just getting that out there. So, so I, I don't particularly blame them for, for Fireman or for Broadway. I... As I say in the review, I was getting into the film for the first hour or so, you know, I'd actually completely forgotten. It's been a while since I watched these movies. I had watched all three at least, at least once before, well, it's only really the third one that I've only seen once before, the first two, I don't know, at least two times before re-watching them now to review them, to video review them anyway. I had forgotten, you know, how, for a while, this film is actually kind of good. You know, I'd, I'd say the first hour or so, it, it actually kind of works. I was getting into the drama. I could get into MJ's problems. I could, yeah, get into the, the drama of it, you know. And I actually quite like the French restaurant scene. You know, not only is it, in my opinion, easily, hands down the best of Campbell's cameos, but it's just, and for, for a while you think it's going to be one of these, you know, dumb comedy scenes that we've seen way too many of, of this, you know, this attempt at a proposal and then it goes horribly wrong. I, I think I'd actually, like, yeah, I, I had it completely wrong in my mind. I, I couldn't remember at all how the scene ended. And what it turns out to be is actually kind of, kind of sad, you know, because it turns out, you know, he really couldn't get past what, you know, what, what he was feeling, basically. He, he was so absorbed with himself that he really wasn't registering what was going on with her. You know, he didn't realize about, you know, that he should have told her about when. You know, I'd, I'd say it's, it's kind of a case-by-case -case thing, but if it's going to upset her that much to not have found out about when, then I would say he should have told her about when, you know. It, it depends on the kind of relationship that you have. Anyway, that's enough Dr. Filling for now. Dr. Phil, anyway, yeah, I don't know if that came across properly. Now, with, but, but yeah, you know, for, uh, well, there are a couple of jokes with it, you know, with, 
wave and then the way it thinks, oh, 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 sorry. Which I actually found quite funny, I, I gotta say. But but yeah, then at the end of it, you know, he just comes up and then he has to fish out the ring and it's just kind of sad, you know. And Peter goes back to calling MJ who will never actually pick up the phone. It's just kind of, in this entire trilogy, if Peter is making a phone call, it's almost definitely to her and it's he's almost undoubtedly going to get the machine, you know, it's... I don't know if Raimi was going for a motif there, for, for some kind of running theme or, or something, but yeah. I want to talk just a little bit more about the comedy in this. I'm glad that it was limited to one scene, but the, the bit with J. Jonah Jameson having to watch his... his blood pressure and, and Betty, Betty Brandt with, with, with the buzzer I'm sorry, I, maybe it's maybe it's dumb to laugh at but I just, I, I really find that funny the, the whole thing with, you know jeet, watch your blood pressure jeet, time to take your pills jeet, not those jeet, not those Drink plenty more. Just, I, I'm sorry. I find it really, really funny. It's it's one of the only things in the entire trilogy, you know. The, yeah. I suppose that pretty much covers. I did think it got a little inconsistent with Sandman. You know, early on he's like, you know, oh, I just want to save my daughter and I don't want to hurt anyone. And then, you know, suddenly he wants to kill Spider-Man. Uh, okay, because Spider-Man is preventing him from stealing money. And, yeah, I, I don't know, it just... It seemed like they just, they needed... They, they, they were cramming too much into the film. You know, they wanted a sympathetic villain. Excuse me. You know, again, the second movie got it right with the tragic villain. You know, because he was still doing horrible things, but he wasn't, you know... Yeah, there, there was that aspect to it. I'm not going to spoil the second movie in this video. And in this, we just have Sandman just... Yeah, he's... Early on, he's like, all oh, you know, I, I don't want to hurt anyone. And then suddenly, he's, you know, yeah, hurting cops, trying to kill Spider-Man. I don't get what, if, if he just wants the money, why doesn't, you know, when, when Venom comes to him and says, you know, we both want to kill Spider-Man, but, you know, we, we need to both do it, why doesn't, you know, Let's say Sandman said something like, you know, okay, but then, you know, I gotta steal some money, or then I need you to help me steal some money. Or maybe just like, you, you know, keep Spider-Man occupied for a while, I gotta steal some money, get my daughter her medicine, her treatment, whatever. Then I'll come and help you with Spider-Man, you know, that kind of thing. Something like that, instead of, yeah. I actually quite like the moment where the new goblin, you know, appears in the final fight. You know, you have this, you know, oh, this could be the end of Spider-Man. He just, you know, keeps, you know, Sandman keeps punching him. Venom's trying to choke him. And then suddenly we just, you know, something lands in Sandman's uh, neck or something. And we just hear beep, 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 you know, and it explodes and it's, you know, him coming in. That's pretty cool. I half expected either Harry or Peter to say, like father, like son, huh? When Harry got stabbed by his own glider. You know, it just, it's, it's, yeah, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe it would have been too, 
silly, but yeah. The whole thing with MJ breaking up, because because the new goblin tells her that otherwise he'll kill Peter. The Nostalgia Critic commented on this in the top 11 dumbest Spider-Man moments with the words, did she forget that he's Spider-Man? And I have to concur, it's just, yeah, it, did she not think that it could be handled? It's, it's again just, the writers needed them in a certain situation and so it didn't really matter if it made any sense, you know, just, yeah. that pretty well covers it. I actually did also kind of find the landlord, Mr. Ditkovich. I really like that knob, by the way. Ditko and... yeah. The, you know, the, the bit where he's like, you know, you, you call a woman, you tell her, you are a good woman and I am a good man. And he's just like, that's it, you know, that's all you gotta say, and uh, everything's solved, you know. I have expected him to add, like, I will, you know, I will supply for you at my farm, or something, you just really, yeah. I also, he also made me laugh in the second movie, as did J.J. Jonah Jameson at times. But, you know, when, with the, the rent thing, that, the, the, the bathroom thing, the rent? You know, that's, yeah. I suppose that pretty well covers it. If there is something just horrendous in this movie that I have not pointed out here, feel free to put it down in the comments. Frankly, I've probably just blocked it out. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.